Hello and welcome to Cultivated World. The day has finally arrived, September the 1st, 2020. On the day of recording, Rolex announced the latest models for the year. As always, we have the highest expectations for the kings of watchmaking. But did they wow us and leave us in awe? Or did Rolex play it safe and boring without any fireworks? Let's jump straight in and take a look. Rolex didn't release one new Submariner or two new Submariners. They updated the whole range. That's a total of eight new Submariners. I don't think anybody predicted that. So what did they change? The case diameter has grown from 40 millimeters to 41 millimeters, but this doesn't tell the whole story. If you look closely, you can see that the lug shape has changed, which now has a more aggressive taper coming in closer to the bracelet and leaving less of an overhang. Despite the growth in case diameter, I would imagine that the more svelte lugs would actually make the Submariner fit smaller. In addition to the growth of the case diameter, the bracelet has been made slightly wider for more comfort and to make it more sturdy on the wrist. I'm not sure how I feel about that because the outgoing bracelet was pretty much perfect. Nonetheless, it's finished off with a signature safety clasp and glide lock adjustment system. The other notable update is the upgrade to the movement. This was the only prediction that everybody got right. The movement in the Submariner was upgraded to the Calibre 3230 movement and the Submariner date gets the Calibre 3235 movement. And if you've heard that before, you'd be right because that's the same movement found in the Sea Dweller. This brings the performance up to date with approximately 70 hours of power reserve. This would allow you to take the watch off on a Friday evening and then pick it up again on Monday morning and it'd still be ticking. And finally, with all new Rolex models, the coronet is included at the six o'clock position between Swiss and Maid. The infamous Green Submariner, affectionately known as the Hulk, was finally discontinued. Those that have been predicting that this would be discontinued year upon year upon year were finally right. So, well done to you. This was replaced with the reference 126610LV, which keeps the green bezel but loses the green sunburst style. This resembles the green bezel Submariner launched on the 50th anniversary of the Submariner, which was nicknamed the Kermit. The white gold Submariner was also updated in the same way, losing the blue colored dial but maintaining the blue bezel. On first impressions, it seems that the green and blue bezels are the same colours as the outgoing models, which would mean that they can be much brighter in real life in the right light. In addition to these models, Rolex has updated the Rolosaur Submariners and the Yellow Gold Submariner, which seems to have the same colour configurations as the models they replaced. So what do I think about the new Submariner? Well, with the proportionally slimmer lugs, the Submariner has seemingly grown into its ears. It has a more refined look and helps to alleviate one of the biggest criticisms of the outgoing model. The movement upgrade is a clear winner, but what about the green and blue bezel models? Personally, I'm not sure that these new models have the same impact as the outgoing models. They don't have that same punch, the same pizzazz, these models are Halo products, the most desirable in the range, especially the green model. The ceramic bezels can look very different in different lighting conditions, so these models could often be mistaken for the plain black version. All in all, if you are lucky enough to have one of the now discontinued Submariners, you're not going to feel like you're missing out. And if you haven't got one, well, it's like nothing's changed and the wait to hear from your AD goes on. The next model to get somewhat of a refresh was the Skydweller. 
This is the first non-professional model to receive the Oysterflex treatment, after the Yachtmaster and the Daytona. This was something that I definitely didn't see coming. I love the Sky Dweller, but I'm not sure of the juxtaposition of the more smart vibe of the Sky Dweller with the easygoing nature of the Oysterflex bracelet. The Sky Dweller case is on the larger side and with the lighter bracelet configuration, it may leave the watch feeling way too top heavy. I am a big fan of the Daytona on the Oysterflex and this configuration definitely works. The Daytona is 50% less expensive than the new Sky Dwellers, which makes the Daytona seem like a bit of a bargain. However, Rolex often has a way of making things work and I will reserve judgment on these Sky Dwellers until I have a chance to try them on in person. Now, what about the Oyster Perpetual models? Well, many of you have probably seen the memes by now of the Power Rangers, the Teletubbies, and even the Disney princesses. But I think the Oyster Perpetual models stole the show. The Oyster Perpetual was released in a multitude of new colors and in four different sizes. My favorites are the pop colors reminiscent of the lacquered Stella dials from the 1970s and 1980s. I love the green dial, but I'm not sure if I'd wear the 41mm or the 36mm. I think originally the 39mm was a very good size, so 41 may be just a little bit too big. But again, I'd have to try it on and I'll reserve judgement until I get to try it on in flesh. These models have a more playful and youthful feeling than anything else in the Rolex range. And this is where I think Rolex focused its creativity for this year's releases. The Oyster Perpetual is regularly seen as the gateway into the brand and is often the first Rolex someone buys. But I seriously see myself going backwards as I already own professional models. This is what I would wear when I don't want to take myself too seriously. After everything that's happened in the world this year, and even talk of Rolex not releasing anything new this year, who would have thought that I will be fawning over an Oyster Perpetual. I certainly didn't. So what do you think of the new Rolex models for 2020? Do you prefer the new Submariners? What about the Sky Dweller? Does it work on the Oyster Flex? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like watches as much as we do and want to see more watch content like this, please like and subscribe and remember to hit that bell icon.